Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Um, this is the next video in my chair repair series. This is a hand cane chair. You will notice that there's a lacing around the perimeter of the chair. And this is where the, the brake is. I'm gonna flip it over, show you underneath. So on a hand cane chair, there are holes all around the perimeter of the seat and the caning material gets woven through the seat. And this is one of the more expensive chairs to repair because it is time consuming. Materials are not all that expensive, but it does take some time. What I'm gonna do is show you about taking out the old seat and then we will get started putting the new seat in. Okay. Okay, so a couple tools like to show you before we get started. One of them is this uh, clipper, like just, it's a wire clipper, but it works just fine for doing, removing chair seats and all. And if you, for some reason, could not find an awl, I don't know why that wouldn't, you wouldn't find one, but if you couldn't, um, and you can get an ice pick, an ice pick makes an ha a very handy awl. And this one is nice because you can actually hit it with a hammer if you need it. And finally, there's a special awl, which I got at Frank's Cane and Rush. And this, I don't know if the photo, can you see that? It's concave. So when the chair seat weaving is happening, having this inside one of the holes creates a little space to feed the cane material up from the bottom or down from the top, depending on which way you're going. But right now I'm more interested in this part right here, which is the sharp edge to take the cane that's in there out. All right, so we're gonna get started. Okay, I think y'all can see me and you can see the chair. So the first thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna go around with the clippers and just start cutting through the loops. And I'm noticing something right away. Whoever put the seat in added some glue. I'm not sure if it's a hot glue. There's a little bit of glue on some of these parts. Hopefully it didn't go down into the actual holes. We'll find out, go along. Just one of the things that can make it more complicated to take stuff apart. thing is as I get in close here to where the legs are attached to this the chair seat if it's hard for me to get in there with the clippers then that's where using this little knife edge on the awl will make it possible for me to break I just want to break these strands and that's so that's the other way to do this is just to slide the the awl sharp knife edge under this and go around and break all of these Make sure that they're broken all the way through because we want to be able to flip the chair over, which you'll see, and begin to pull up on that spline edge that I showed you all and be able to start removing the seat. This is going to take me a little while um, to do this. And so rather than bore you with the first preliminary parts of taking this out, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just cutting. I'm going to go all the way around the chair and I will show you when I, before I flip it over that all these are cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you have a chair and you're working along with me for any reason, that'd be really cool. Um, that's what you'll be doing right now. You can put this video on pause if you need to and uh, pick it back up once you get all the strands that are under the chair cut. Okay, so back in just a moment. y'all can see this. Um, so now, having cut underneath all those little loops, the spline can start being lifted up. And we 
may actually be able to pull the seat out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it, this, this particular chair, I'm not sure that it will because there's glue holding some of these and it's probably inside the hole. So it's a good example of what you can get into <laughs> when you start working on a chair because you just never know. Um, and a lot of folks, it, I mean, if you if you like antique stores and you go shopping in different antique stores, um, you're going to run into all sorts of stuff. But this is a great skill to have because many times furniture that's you know, got a big hole punched in the seat is going to be a lot less expensive than a pristine or, you know, at least undamaged piece of furniture. So having this as a skill um, is very good. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to keep going around here, ripping this out. My editing skills aren't great, and they recently changed something on YouTube so, for, for doing the editing before I post videos, so I'm not quite sure um, how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to just keep going with this and show you. So it's coming off pretty easily, actually, all things considered. So be reaching underneath and um, start pulling these little pieces back down through into the bottom of the chair. One thing, ooh, one thing I didn't uh, mention, uh, and for folks who are new at doing this, you'll notice, um, so these are going front to back, um, and we'll get into this when I actually start reweaving the chair, but you'll notice on the sides there's a little edge, you know, that's, it's not a perfectly round seat, it's not a perfectly square seat, it's got this little detail. So over on this side, you'll see that there's a short row here, and a short row here, and a short row here, and then, and then it continues on up. So normally, whilst I, when I was learning to do this, what Alice had me do is just make a little pencil mark off to the side of where these short rows are going to be anchored onto the perimeter of the seat. And if I do this side, it'll be easy to understand what's going on on the other side as well, just for y'all. Um, okay, and then this one right here goes up to right there. And then the last one is already up into the corner. So glad I just realized I hadn't done that as part of the demonstration because when you're first learning to do this, it can mess with your mind and you'll think, oh my goodness, that doesn't look right. And it doesn't because the two sides don't come out the same if you don't know where you're supposed to go. All right, I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna put this on pause since you know basically what's happening and I'll show you when it's out. Okay, so I think you can see the light coming through all the holes all the way around, which means I've got everything cleared out. If I hadn't, then I would be using the awl to poke it through, or if it was really jammed in there, it would be okay to take a drill and drill that out. But the glue, um, the glue is not an issue. Now over here, um, oops, <laughs> that's my magic flashlight. Um, over here, you can see light shining through even though the holes themselves um they touch up against the leg um and let's see if i can just tip this like that maybe put you down here yeah so they bump into the leg but it's not going to obstruct the caning process now the next thing sorry to <laughs> whip you all around like that the next thing i want to do is Put a, um, a rounded edge. Make sure that this edge right here is rounded. On many chairs that I, they crack along this front edge and it's because they didn't take the time to round this out just a little bit. When someone's sitting in a chair and their bottom is pushing down on this, a, a sharp edge 
maybe not initially, but over time as the cane material gets a little age on it, that is the area that sometimes has the potential to break. Although, as I showed you at the beginning, this one had a, a press mark right in here. Again, some feller with a big old honking wallet probably sat down in it anyway. All right, so what we want to do, um, if, you're, if you're lucky, maybe your chair already has a rounded edge, but if it doesn't, you could take um, a file. And I've got both a coarse and a finer. I'm just going to start with a coarse file. And... <laughs> too much. Let me pop you up here on the table. Okay. I believe this is showing up. taking a tremendous amount of material off you're just wanting to make that sharp edge be rounded so there's not a potential to crack the cane later on Murphy's oil soap and just wipe this off. I want the surface, especially this stuff here, I want it to be as clean as possible because once the seat is in, you can't go back and do that. Well, you can, but it's just not very easy. Okay, Murphy's oil soap safely cleans wood. That's what we want. We don't want to do anything that's going to damage any of the finish or anything on here. Also, I do, um, do not want to lose my pencil marks. Um, and Murphy's oil soap <laughs> can take those off. So just be careful when I get on that left side so I don't inadvertently take our marks off the edge. Yeah, I'll just go around, clean it up a little bit. It will make the chair look better when we're finished. So that's the Murphy's oil. Oops. Just to clean this plain water, wipe it off. Edges. Yeah, it's pretty dirty, don't you think? <laughs> For lots of years. And don't worry about the pencil marks, they can be erased at the end, so they will disappear. Just for us, whilst we're working on it. All right, so that takes care of that. This has got to dry now, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Some chairs you'll end up, it's an odd amount, and you'll end up with one peg in the center, and other times you'll end up with two pegs in the center. So just gonna go ahead and count these off like this, counting them pairs at a time. All right, so we've got two in the back, and presumably we will have two in the front. I like it better when there's two pegs uh, matching up each time. This one is not. So what I'm seeing is this hole is to the front of the joint and this hole is right on the joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and count this one even though they're not quite in the same position to make it match 
having two in the front as well as two in the back. So this is a good, this is actually a very good chair to, to demonstrate on because, okay, there we go. So it'll be these two and they are directly across the seat from each other. So now I'm gonna soak some cane. So the cane material, just come around here. Um, the cane material is exactly the same plant that we saw in the, which chair was that? Um, well, it, it's all the same material. It's the rattan material. I showed you the inside of it when we were doing the splint seat, which I think is the first one in the series. I showed you pre-woven in the press seat, which is the same material. Um, so all of this needs to get soaked. I want to look for the longest strands initially to do this front to front to back weaving and, and it, then in the second step when we go to side to side. I want the longest strands for that because then that's less uh, breaks. Every time I have to start or end a piece, I'm gonna be putting a peg in. And the less of those there are, the neater the work is at the end of the weaving process. Okay, so I'm gonna go put this into soak and I'll be back with y'all in just a few minutes. All right, so I just pulled a strand of cane out of the water and I don't know if you can see this. So on one of the other videos, I talked about this plant and how it grows and that there are like joints on it in the same way like bamboo would have joints. And when you're working with it, you can run your fingers over it and there's, you will feel like a little catch going in one direction and then just smooth going in the other direction. And that's gonna play a part as we get into more of the actual weaving. For the moment though, with this first strand, I'm just gonna start putting it into the chair. I'd hope to have some music um, off of one of my YouTube channels that I like to follow, but we're having solar flares this week. And for whatever reason, <laughs> the YouTube is not loading. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and you'll just be quiet here with me, I guess. Um, okay, so let me just, this through. Oh, and the other thing about this, um, there is a flat or matte side and there is a shiny side and we want the shiny side to be up. Just like in the other, um, the other caning. So the, the working peg um, will follow along until I run out of cane material and at, at whatever point that is that is that's where the end of the the cane is and then I'll start adjacent to that with the next piece. So let's do this drop it down through there. But this one where the short end is that will remain in place throughout the whole procedure until we get to the final uh, part when we take all the pegs out because they're not needed. Right now what happens is if we didn't have the pegs to hold this in place this would just be very loose and floating around and you could not weave a tight seat with the pegs holding it in place. Once we get enough of the cane material in then I can start removing the pegs because the cane material itself will hold everybody where they need to be. Whoops, I might need more light. There we go. Make sure the right, the right side or the shiny side is up. So, and I just run my hand over it as I'm pushing it through because I live with a cat and a dog. And although I vacuum, <laughs> there is critter fur on the floor and this material is damp and it just wants to pick everything up. But this is also a good habit to get into when you're caning because if you feel something that feels like it's broken or not um, over time your hands your hands just become full of their own understanding of the material and you don't even need to look at it and you know what's going on okay. put that all the way through so yeah so that's just and that's just all I do and I'm getting a little bit of dog fur off of it <laughs> I guess if I worked in a shop, um, I wouldn't have
have a dog. Well, maybe we would. The young folks um, in Asheville who do this, um, they do have a dog in the shop, but he's sort of restricted to one area. Um, Rita, she pretty much goes wherever she wants. She just heard me <laughs> say her name, so she's coming in the kitchen. There you are. Hello, sweetie. Is it getting close to dog supper time? Yeah, it is. All right. I will fix you something. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to pause the camera, fix Frida her supper, and um, when, when I come back, this will be... This will be laced up. If you're lacing your own chair right now, just keep going and I'll be back with y'all in just a minute or two. So step one, which is the front to back weaving is now complete. And I'm gonna start the horizontal and I'm gonna pause this for just a moment so I can get y'all up there on the bench and you can look down at what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. Oh, the other thing I need to mention is if you're working on this for a while, and you, especially when you have these um, long strands, if it begins to um, dry out, you can either get a small spray bottle or just dip a cloth in some water and run the, run the cane through, over the cloth um, through your hands and re-moisten it if it's beginning to feel like it doesn't have the flexibility. And I just saying that because I'm just noticing this one is beginning to get a little bit, feeling a little bit dry. So, ah, here's the moment. Okay, so remember I was telling you about this amazing awl with the concave. As I put that in there, it creates a little, I should probably move the camera down so you can see what it looks like underneath the chair, but it creates a little pocket, she says. <laughs> there it is. Um, to allow the cane to come back up. It gets more uh, challenging the more times you run the cane through a hole. Obviously, it makes it harder and harder to get the next piece through, and that's when that all really becomes important. I will put a link to Frank's Cane in Rush below the video. I think I've done that before, but I will do it again on this one. Um, they're in California. They're really amazing. He has helped me many times to find some obscure kind of material, like I can get a chair in from a client and have no clue what the material is or not be able to find it locally and I can send a piece of it to him and he's able to um, find it or find whatever will be closely the equivalent to, um, to replace the seat company. Additionally, when you're working the, the material and the holes are really getting full and it seems like um, you need to make some space you can just take an awl and put it in and kind of do that and press the cane that's in there up against the sides of the hole to make the center space available for the next pass that you're you're coming through once i get beyond the corner of the um, chair leg here it will get a little bit easier as i said it does not completely obscure the hole to to do the caning but it does make it a little bit tighter versus the ones that are going to be out here along the edge. So. Um, I'm wanting to show you, you know, the, the weird stuff that happens, the tricky things that happen, you know, not knowing, like, yeah, I didn't, when I got the chair from the client, I did not notice that there was glue you know, holding the, 
holding the strands in place underneath so you know sometimes you get a piece of furniture and you're not really noticing what the small challenges or big challenges could be. I generally look the, the piece over pretty carefully because there are some things that at this point, I mean, I've been doing this for over 40 years. Um, at this point, they're just like, I'm getting close to wanting to retire. And that's partly the reason why I wanted to put these videos together so I can leave this information for folks beyond my time here on the planet. People can um, still learn how to do the skill. Um, but anyway, the some of the some of the furniture that's come in the last the last month or tried to, <laughs> let me say tried to come in the last month um, I've turned a couple of jobs down because I'm just like nah I really want to enjoy my hikes and time with my friends and the other stuff that I'm studying and being in the garden and helping Russ up on the mountain with the trees and now I'm excited about the um, fermenting and I hope. I hope you all check that out if you're interested in sauerkraut. Um, yeah, I'm going to be putting some more of those together. I'm gonna, I may just make a special folder for sauerkraut even beyond the, um, the videos having to do with food. So, okay, whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll just, just know that I'm going to just keep working all the way across the chair and then you'll see it when I come back where we are. We're now ready to do step number three. So step number one was front to back. Step number two, side to side. Step number three is also front to back or back to front in this case because that's where I came up. Um, and it runs alongside the first step, keeping it just a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and lace this one through and I, I'll do a few rows and then I'll bring you down closer so you can get a better view of what's happening. And the reason we go a little bit to the right is that in the fourth step, we're again going to go side to side, but we're going to, by putting this third step over top of the second step, we're creating the ability to run the fourth step alongside and weave it over and under. And this, these little places here where it's on top and then the first step is below, that's where we will be doing the weaving. And you will see that as we get closer. Um, but this, the first three steps are, are the fast, the fast ones. So we're just putting these on. I mean, you're, obviously you're being neat. You're not leaving any funny loops underneath the bottom of the chair. And I'll flip it over for you um, afterwards and show you what I'm talking about there. But we want it. It's neat. There's no um, there's no funny loops. I mean, you can run your hand along underneath here. As the very first part of this video where I was cutting those loops. That's the kind of neat loops underneath that we want to have as we're replacing the seat. So this is going alongside and you can, you know, just slide it around a little bit. Everything is, is pretty pliable at this point, pretty movable because there's not many strands in the seat. And that's why I was saying that's why we have the pegs here to hold everything so it doesn't, um, it doesn't lose the uh, tension on it, and the tension is important. Okay. So, and then also, you know, always making sure that we have the slick side up as y'all are weaving your seats. You make sure the slick side stays up. Okay. Now I'll do just a few more rows then I'll bring you down here for a close-up you can see what I'm talking about a little bit closer and then I'll put you on pause so you can work on your chair while I'm working on this one and then we'll come back and I'll show you um, what it looks like when we start the next step now the next step is the first part of the actual weaving and so that that step will go much slower than these first ones. 
Um, that's where the, the time comes. And at that point, you begin to see how the pattern is starting to take effect. You can get start seeing the, the pattern showing up once you get the weaving, that fourth step gets started. All right, let me, uh, let me bring you down here so you can see what I'm talking about, keeping it to the right. And then I'll finish this and then we'll, we'll come back for getting started on the fourth step. Also, I think I, I wanted to mention this, um, when we were doing the rush seats and I said, you really have to just keep going with it. You have to finish it in a, in a, in a day, what you're doing and the splint seats, the same thing. You, you don't want to stop. You want to just keep going with it because of how the material is already pre-moistened and it just flows better and you can't wet it again afterwards. These hand cane seats, it's really nice because we can stop this. You know, it's getting, it's not dark 30 out there yet, but it's, it's getting there. So I'll probably finish this step and then start on the next one either tomorrow or the next day that I have a moment um, to, to take you into the next step. But it's okay to pause it. Nothing will go wrong um, with the materials. And usually I try to finish, you know, so I don't have a long strand hanging out, you know, that it's it's just short. So let me bring you down so you can see what I'm talking about with the keeping it to the right there. Okay, so you can see how the one on the bottom, this is the one on the top, and it's to the right. That's This one is to the right. Also, I wanted to mention that the strand in the front, um, sometimes, depending on the on the chair, I will make this whole, let me back up a little bit, this whole front, front strand, I'll make that a separate piece, just because sometimes if it's really, really tight here in the front, you want, you want some room to be able to slip under the, um, the verticals. And if it's too tight and you can't do that, if this is a separate piece that's not woven in, like it's not the continuation of the whole weave, it's easier to shift it around and move it and put that other horizontal strand in. Okay, I'm gonna finish this and uh, be back in just a moment. Well, it is definitely dark 30 now. I had a couple of interruptions, but <laughs> I am now weaving the fourth step. So I am going under the first step, over the third step, and to the front of the second step. And I don't know if, I mean, I know you're seeing this, but I don't know if it's close enough to really see what's happening. So usually what I'll do is weave along certain amount and then I'll just slide it and in these early stages of getting the weaving started it's important to keep your warp and weft um, organized um, because like I said things are very fluid right now they will they will slide around so it's important to keep um, also you can start this step anywhere on the chair. Um, when I was first learning to do it, Alice always had me start at the back and work forward. But depending on where I ended up, like I ended up coming up through here and I still had this much material left, I didn't want to just leave that hanging off, figuring this will, you know, this will be my last strand for the evening and we'll pick this up again either tomorrow or the next day, depending on what happens. Um, and it's fine if if you end a strand. Cat's sneezing. Um, if you end a strand um, in the middle of the seat and want to use it rather than just clip it off underneath, you can do that. Um, so yeah. Okay. Here he comes. Can you see him? Yeah, there he is. There you are. Yeah. Are you going to inspect the work? What do you think? Does it look all right? You cannot get on this chair. I'm sorry. It's not strong enough yet. Yeah. 
Thank you. Cats, they are the, uh, the inspectors, the encouragers, and sometimes the mischief makers. <laughs> uh, he's being good. When he was younger, he was <laughs> definitely wanting to get in it. So, okay. Just across there at the end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move you over here so you can see. Um, hopefully you can see this. Um, yeah. So I have to get any closer than that. So see how it's it's going under the first step and over the second step, whereas the one that we laid in the second step was just laid over the top, and then we put, then we put the this other one to the right of it, and that's created the places to do the weaving. And the this fourth step will always be in front. Every one of these, it will be to the front of the chair of every one of these in order to create this little grid. And that's what will happen. Once the entirety of the fourth step is done, you will very clearly see the grid that the ones that run from kitty corner to kitty corner uh, will get woven through. All right, I'm going to end this here. Um, we'll pick this up, but you know basically what's happening. Uh, the fourth step is woven in front, and we just continue until the entire, the entire chair has all those pieces woven in. This is the uh, end of part one. You'll have to see us over in part two. YouTube will not allow me to upload this as one video. My apologies. Okay, see you over there in part two. Maybe this guy will show up with us too.